Hey, this is Wes with Vegetate, and today I wanted to discuss the new trend on YouTube about candle power flower pots, heaters that is, and I wanted to see what the big fuss is all about and if they really work. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Vegetate presents, welcome to my garden. Okay, this is the basic construction of my flower pot heater that I found on the internet. It is basically two flower pots, one bigger one and one smaller one, and four candles and a small baking dish or baking tray. You place the four candles inside the baking tray, put on the inner top, cover the top so there's no heat can escape, and place another bowl on top like this. So you have this. First thing I noticed was the instability of the heater. Um, it tends to easily knock over and makes a big mess. Uh, the first time I made one, I actually bumped the bottom tray and of course the weight fell over from the heavier pot and caused the bottom tray to fall over. So this is not a very safe heater, if you will. Uh, it's very dangerous actually, it can be depending on where you use it. I do not recommend using it, like for example, my greenhouse, which has a wood floor, and could cause a fire. And there have been reports from a lot of uh, firefighters around the world that report fires from accidents based on people trying to save money by using self-powered heaters or some kind of a heating source that's not up to code. I started my, starting my temperature of my time. I got an opening temperature of 68.9 degrees at 10.31 p.m. Exactly one minute later, I calculated the temperature of being, I'm sorry, five minutes later, I got the temperature of uh, 127 degrees in five minutes. And each minute after that, you can see here. In a total of 10 minutes, the temperature raised almost 100 degrees. Now, it took me exactly almost a full hour to reach top temperature. The total temperature was 277 degrees, 0.4 Fahrenheit. And I will put the Celsius on the screen as well. website called Little Greenhouse dot com and they have a BTU calculator on there. They basically calculate the area of your structure which mine is a 701. It's the width times the height times the length. Now give you the true internal measurement of the heat or the actual airspace that you have to heat. You also put in your minimum outside temperature, the inside temperature that you would like to do. I went with 35 degrees outside and a 55 degree inside if possible. It also tells you to put in your heat loss value or your R value and mine is 6 mil polyethylene and it's coming out to be 1.15. You calculate all that up to come out to 16,000 123 BTUs per hour. Now, my current heating source right now is, on average, is my electric heater, and it puts off about 15, 
5500 BTUs. Now it would take about three of those to get about a, a 20 degree delta change. Okay? So I'm always trying to find an easier way. I wanted to figure out how many BTUs the candle power flower pot heater would put out. And the way you discover B use per hour is this. You take the delta change of your starting temperature minus your ending temperature that by however many minutes you rate, rated the measurement at. So I went one minute, so it's going to be times 60 minutes. Okay? And it is, a BTU is the measurement of getting one, out, one pound of water, which equals 15.3 ounces of total temperature. So, now, my measurement here, as you can see in the video, I measured the starting temperature minus the closing temperature with the candle fire pot heater, and I got a two degree change. So, I'll take two degrees, which went from 62 to 64, and you multiply that times 60, and you're going to get 120 BTUs. Now, if we do our math right, to get that much, how many fire pot heaters will I would need? We're going to take the 16,123 divided by 120, and it's going to take 134, 134 flower pot heaters raise it 20 degrees. That is not efficient, in my opinion. And if you take that number there, the 134, and times it by four candles each, it's going to take 500, 537 candles every four hours. That is a lot of candles.